Since I started making reactions about Canada, one of the places in Canada that I found most interesting and that I wanted to explore a bit more was Quebec. Now, Quebec I know is the largest province in Canada, so that in itself is quite interesting. But because the thing that makes it different for me is obviously the French culture, the French influence on that region, uh, how it compares and contrasts to the rest of the English speaking Canada and you know like France is as a country itself is a country I really enjoy like my parents lived there for a couple of years so I spent a lot of time there uh, really love everything about it whether it's the food the architecture the people and I'm really interested to see how that French culture translates into North America in Canada and yeah I'm just really going to be making quite a few videos about Quebec and learning more about the culture the history of this great place and today but we're going to be looking at the top 10 things to do in Quebec City so Quebec City I believe is the capital city of Quebec the the, the province uh, so let's check this out see what interesting things are there are to do in Quebec if you're from Quebec tell me what you like doing in Quebec if you're from outside, outside Quebec tell me what you like or what you think about Quebec the only walled city in North America and a UNESCO World Heritage Site French-speaking Quebec City has a strategic location atop steep cliffs that overlook the St. Lawrence River. Founded in 1608 as a fur trading colony at present-day Place Royale, it quickly became an administrative centre and today is the capital of Quebec province and one of the most beautiful cities in Canada. In this and that's a big shout because Canada has so many beautiful cities, so many beautiful places. But there's so much interesting things already there. The fact that it's atop cliffs. I would really like to see that from the other side of the cliffs. Uh, that's interesting with regards to its geography. Uh, the fact that it was founded in 16, 1608, so like really a lot of history, a, a long history just with this, uh, this city. And yeah, the fact it's a walled city, that's something you'd, I mean, I think it's the only walled city in North America. Something that's quite common in Europe, and I really like those type of cities. Uh, as long as they're kept right and kept nice, uh, they're very interesting places to visit. This video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated attractions and things to do in <coughs> Quebec City. And just wait till you see the number one that we're going to be showing in this video. Something you would never even have thought of. So make sure you watch till the end. Oh, I see the number oh, one. Before we begin, you can help support our channel by becoming a member of this channel. Press recommend some other videos below. about Quebec, the province, or the awesome city that videos. describe its now, history. Let's cut to the chase. Yeah, this is the building I've seen on another video. This building is fantastic. As I said, as a fan of architecture, especially this kind of gothic, definitely very French style, but it's such a grand, imposing building with this square in the middle. It looks like something that would be, it's been there for hundreds of years, uh, and it's still very well maintained and a great view of that Magnificent river. At 10, fortifications of Quebec National Historic Site. In the more than 300 years of its history, Quebec has come to possess a variety of fortifications, all of which can be explored on an hour long circular walk. The bastions, walls, mm. towers, gates, and countless old cannon show how well the former French colony was protected. Completed in 1832, the four and a half kilometers of defensive ramparts on the west flank Huge. of the old city were constructed of granite and sand, the only fortifications of this kind in North America. Mm. Numerous pieces of weaponry are a constant reminder of Quebec's troubled past. So the troubled past was that wars and or attempted invasions or something like that, but you see there that you see the images of the fortification there and as i said what i like is when it's very well kept that look pristine and it's something again it's the only one in north america so that already makes quebec city for me a highly demand in demand place to visit because it's something so unique in a huge continent in a huge country nothing like this exists anywhere else in that whole continent and to see it so well mint maintained it shows how much the quebec how Quebec City respects its history uh, and that is definitely something I would love to see in person. Tell me if you've actually seen that and what you think about it in person. Have you walked along those walls? Uh, what's it like? Nine, the Observatoire de la Capitale, Capital Observatory. 
Atop the Mary Gillard building, this 360-degree observatory provides more than just a bird's-eye view of the city from the 31st floor. Interactive exhibits introduce how Quebec City developed and grew over the centuries, mm. with a kids type section designed lessons, just for little ones. Mm. The panorama extends beyond the old walled city to Levis, the St. Lawrence and the Ile de l'Orleans. You can also get excellent views of the city from the Funicular, oh, the Quebec City's solution to its extremely hilly geography. The Funicular runs from Cortea Petit Champlain in the lower town to Chateau Frontenac in upper town to save weary travellers from steep staircases. Mm. It has been transporting passengers at a staggering 45 degree angle since 1879, most recently updated in 1998 with glass walled elevator carriages. Nice. Yeah, that funicular is something again is very common in places like France, in Switzerland, I know it's still very commonly used. Is that also unique to Quebec City? Is there any of them el elsewhere in North America? Even a little thing like that is so interesting. It gives so much heart to the city. Some something is like you can actually see that from all around, and it's just very different. Uh, and that 360 degree view of the city and that the the top of that building. Another very good thing I like how it's interactive for children, and you can learn about this city. You know, like uh, that's something a lot of cities have are these large towers with observatories or viewing platforms. But to have that interactivity and have those history lessons, learning about Quebec City, very nice. At eight, Basilica of Saint Anne de Beaupré. Okay, man. Straight away, look at this beautiful cathedral. Again, my f my family lived in a place called Bourges in the centre of France, and it had a fantastic cathedral. Usually, like the interiors of these are fantastic and really nice to see. But just look at that. It's I just love this, how they've imported or how they keep this culture alive and keep it vibrant uh, so that this is, this is people know their roots of French or French roots and it pays real respect to the history of hey. the city. Saint Anne is the patron saint of Quebec and is credited with many miracles of healing the sick and disabled. Located northeast of Quebec in Beaupre, this stunning Catholic basilica is a destination for half a million pilgrims wow. each year. The present-day church dates to 1926, but the first chapel was built here in the 17th century. Another famous Catholic basilica is the Cathedrale Notre-Dame de Quebec, Notre -Dame. designed by the architect Ballarger and completed in 1844. The interior of Notre-Dame de Quebec is very impressive with a beautiful wow. altar, episcopal so canopy and stained glass windows. Again, man, like absolutely fantastic preservation of these buildings, and they just look like I say they're like from over a hundred years old, and it's still kept in like absolutely pristine condition. Uh, so many opulent uh, finishings, and in, in the interior is very grand and beautiful. Tell me if you're from Quebec. Do you visit these places? What do you think of them? Is it does it make you proud to have like fantastic? buildings like this in your city. Next up at seven, Parliament Building, Hotel du Parlement and Parliament Hill. This spaciously laid out district, immediately southwest of the old upper town, is the seat of Quebec's provincial government. Mm. The Parliament, completed in 1877, so but classy. later extended, could have been modelled on any number of Parisian public buildings. Mm. The Salle de l'Assemblée Nationale, wow. the National Assembly and Salle de Conseil Législatif Legislative Council are open to the public. Both are fine old chambers, sumptuously furnished. Tickets should be obtained in advance. Nearby, find the Grand Théâtre, a venue for plays, concerts and symphony performances, as well as the large Palais de Congrès shopping and entertainment complex. I mean, that was just a perfect example of the, the contrast in the modern and the traditional architecture, but both at the highest level. One thing I was thinking about with regards to Quebec City, because it has this huge French influence and it's French speaking, how easy is it for English people, English speaking people to actually travel there? Do, is English still very commonly spoken? Is it easy to get by there if you can only speak English? Like my French is very basic. Uh, I don't think I could get by speaking like fluently or anything like that or trying to cold conversations, but uh, is it easy for English-speaking tourists to travel there, really? 
<coughs> At six, Chateau Frontenac. Constructed Chateau for the Frontenac. Canadian Pacific Railway in 1894, the Grand Falmont Le Chateau Frontenac is one of the city's most prominent landmarks and esteemed hotels. This historic property can be seen from miles away and is especially impressive at night. In front of the hotel, Terrasse de Ferrin offers stunning views northwards to the Laurentians, and the Promenade des Gouverneurs leads southward toward the Citadel and Plans of Abraham. This elevated vantage was the original site of Fort St. Louis, mm. the governor's residence in colonial times. Tourists can see the ruins underneath the promenade. Chateau Frontenac is also historically significant for the Quebec Conference in August 1943 Whoa, with so the Allied powers Winston Churchill, Franklin D. Roosevelt, William L. M. King, Vice Admiral Lord Mountbatten, the U.S. Chief of Staff, General George C. Marshall and others laid preparations for the D-Day landings in Normandy, June the 6th, 1944. Mm. That's very a very interesting piece of history there. Next up at five, visit Musée de la Civilisation. The Musée de la Civilisation in Quebec City is a three-part institution that delves into the many facets of human history and the establishment of French America, with the main museum located in Basseville near the Old Port. Built to designs by the well-known architect Moshe Safdi, the Central Museum is of great architectural interest. The permanent collection draws from civilizations around the world as well as exploring the Quebec experience. Mm. The Musée de l'Amérique Francophone is housed in the historic Seminaire de Quebec in Upper Town. As the name suggests, the museum deals with all aspects of the history of the French in North America. The Musée de la Civilisation also has exhibits at Place Royale, where Samuel de Champlain founded Quebec, the first permanent French settlement in North America. So many nice museums there, so much culture. But it's like things like this, the more I'm seeing these different things in Quebec, you can really see its uh, its personality and how that actually varies between, or how that differs from places like Vancouver, Toronto, Ottawa. They all have their own very distinct and unique personalities. I think that is what makes Canada a very intriguing and interesting place for me compared to a lot of other countries where all the cities are very similar. These cities are all very different, but they all look very, very nice. At four, stroll through Quartier Petit Champlain. Once the bustling capital of New France, the Quartier Petit Champlain is arguably the most beautiful area of the city. Mm. Wandering the narrow streets wow. that lace between the historic buildings makes you feel like you are in the heart of an old European city. Yeah, the like stone structures Swiss that line the pedestrian-only streets now house a wide variety of shops, services and restaurants. This is the perfect place to visit for strolling and meandering, and it's a truly lovely area year-round. Tourists will find artisan boutiques, Quebec cuisine restaurants and bistros, Quebec art galleries cuisine? and a generous assortment of sweet shops offering mm. everything from handcrafted fudge and oh. nougat to a stylish creperie. Clothing boutiques here offer unique items for sale, from stores that offer only alpaca products to those showing the latest trends. Photographers will also find interesting sites in the Quartier Petit Champlain. Mm. The umbrella-covered lane, Rue de Cul-de-Sac, offers a colorful spectacle, as well as some respite from the sun or rain. While you're here, pop into La Fougerie for a treat. Watch for the large Trompe l'Huile Mural, Fresque du Petit Champlain, at the far end of Rue de Petit Champlain that gives a glimpse into the city's history. Mm. I mean, that is like right, that, I mean, excuse the pun, but that is right up my street, man. That is like, that, that would be like, it seems like a perfect place to visit at like Christmas or something when it's cold and snowy. You can walk through this, like these little streets, go into these nice little cafes where it's warm and cozy. Uh, but to see like that's, this again, how it's like, this is what I wanted to learn about Quebec, how much French influence is there. And it looks like it's, it really does look like a, a city in France that's just been transported here. Like all the buildings, these sit little small streeted, uh, all these little lanes uh, in this area, the little boutiques and things like it's so French. You get things like the funicular and all these different, the big cathedral, so many different influences. The fact this is in North America, just it's this makes me want to go there and see this and experience it for myself. But if, tell me what you think about that little area with all those little lanes, it seems beautiful to me. 
At three, see the Plains of Abraham, Champ de Bataille. Outside the city walls to the west of the citadel stretches the green expanse known as the Plains of Abraham, Champ de Bataille, where in 1759 the British, led by General Wolfe, fought the French under Montcalm and won. Exhibits retell the tumultuous history of how Quebec City resisted and then fell to the British. The park is also home to the remains of two Martello Towers, later additions to Quebec's fortifications. Hmm. Begun in the late 1930s, the Joan of Arc garden designed by Louis Perron has a fabulous display of flowers from spring until fall. Families visiting with children will find interactive exhibits at the museum which encourage younger visitors to engage with history and young children will have fun with the family treasure hunt which encourages exploration and discovery within the park. Yeah, that's cool man, especially I have two young children, this seems like a perfect city for travelling with number children. Two, explore La Citadelle de Quebec. Thrusting upwards from the western facing the St. Lawrence River, Cap Diamant reaches a height of 100 meters and commands an extensive and varied panorama. Sitting atop this is Quebec's star-shaped citadel, a massive fortress protected by thick walls, ramparts and ditches mm. that was built in 1832. Still an active military post, the citadel is used as military quarters for generals, officers and servicemen, as well as the summer residence of the Governor-General of Canada. This is also the headquarters of the 22nd Canadian Regiment, which formed at the beginning of the First World War and boasts a distinguished record, including action at the Battle of the Somme and much later in the Korean War. Mm. Summer visitors can watch the changing of the guard ceremony each morning and the military museum, located in the mid-18th century powder magazine in the southern corner of the Citadel, is open year-round. From the far end of the boardwalk in front of the Chateau Frontenac, a set of stairs leads up to the Citadel and Plains of Abraham. I mean, that's just a fantastic place as well, man. Again, Quebec City, like, that's what one thing I didn't really, I didn't really know anything about Quebec City, to be honest, but to actually learn how much history is in the city and how, not just how much history it has, but how much it puts on display and allows you to learn about the city, that's a thing I think a lot of cities could take note from and incorporate. It's like, I live in Asia. And to be honest, I live in Malaysia, like there's just not as not as much museums and not as much uh, not as much places to learn about the history. This looks very rich in places to learn about the history and it's good that they're so proud of their history uh, for visitors. It just makes it very enticing. Let's see what number one is. And finally, at number one, Wonder wander through, through Place, Place Royale. Royale. This is tourist central in Quebec, both for the history and the modern-day ambiance that comes with the restaurants, patios and shops that now fill the historic structures. Place Royale stands on the site of Quebec's actual foundation, the spot where, in 1608, Samuel de Champlain erected a fur trading post that soon grew into the capital of French America. Named in honour of Louis XIV, whose bust adorns it, Place Royale is the largest surviving ensemble of 17th and 18th century buildings in North America. Wow. The pretty stone church, Notre Dame de Victoire, faces a cobbled square, along with Maison Chevalier of the Musée de la Civilisation. Adjacent to Place Royale, facing out over the river and encircled by stout walls and palisades, the little Batterie Royale was constructed in 1691. In summer, the area is home to outdoor dining areas. In winter, the snow transforms the old streets and stone buildings that into a postcard perfect so nice. scene. This is a beautiful area to wander yeah. through in the day or evening and at any time of the year. And there you have the top 10 rated att Okay, they were fantastic. Like, the, the one main takeaway for that for me is I just got to pay respect to whoever the, the local government is here who or the, the people who have been in charge of this city over the last like 100, 200 years who have just kept this city, kept the heart and the personality of this city, the history of it, preserved these buildings fantastically. So many old, like this one here, the, the largest like area of these old 1800 uh, buildings. It's like a full little small town of these old buildings. It just, you just don't see it in a lot of places. A lot of places want to kind of moder modernise their buildings and modernise their cities and rip out the heart of their cities. Quebec City is keeping that heart and for me that sets it apart from a lot of other places and makes it, 
it would make it for me a very enticing as i mentioned and a very enticing place to visit and somewhere i would just love to spend some time there and just walk around not have things to do but just walk around and just admire these buildings and just live that life in these little buildings but tell me if you're from quebec city what do you think about that how do you do you enjoy all these old buildings uh how is the the city changing over time is it becoming more modernized uh tell me what you think about quebec city and especially if you're from outside quebec city in canada tell me what your perceptions of quebec city and quebec as a as a region are i'd be very interested to know thanks